All right, so I've got a bread maker, and it had these paddles with it, but the um, the nonstick coating was starting to peel off. So I figured what I want to do is I want to try to anodize these. These look a lot like aluminum to me, and what I've done to prepare them is I've I've sandblasted them, and then I've sanded them to about 320 grit. So they've got a nice smooth surface. But I don't know for sure that these are aluminum or even a type of aluminum that will anodize. I'm pretty sure because they're a lightweight and I don't think that they would use uh, a zinc alloy in uh, a food thing. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna test it. Uh, on the table here, I've got some lye and I've got some sodium bisulfate. Now the aluminum should react aggressively with the lye. It should start foaming and bubbling right away and, and etching the surface, which is actually something I wanna do prior to anodizing anyway. Um, and then I've got a, a solution of sodium bisulfate here, and the sodium bisulfate is going to be my anodized electrolyte. Um, now, if this is aluminum, it should not react aggressively with the sodium bisulfate. Basically, nothing should happen. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to dip these and then see what happens. We'll observe it, uh, and I'll be rinsing in between so I don't get cross-contamination with the baths. All right, so what I've done here is I've put this paddle on a piece of aluminum wire, and we're just going to dip it in the lye and see what happens. So the surface is bubbling. It is beginning to uh, to react with the lye. And this is not a particularly aggressive concentration of lye. I could probably go with uh, a lot more aggressive solution. I probably should too. Just so faster etching and easier anodized removal. Okay, so that looks a lot like that's going to be aluminum. I'm going to rinse this off, and then we'll try the sodium bisulfate. All right, so I have rinsed off the part. It's free of the acid, or sorry, free of the base. Now we're going to test it in the acid and see what happens. And there's no reaction to speak of. So I think we can be pretty confident at this point that what we're dealing with is aluminum. But there's one more test I want to run. One of the tests we can do to determine if something is a specific alloy or a specific material anyway, is we can do a flame test and we can actually look at the uh, thermal chromatism of the actual material. So in this case, I'm going to take some aluminum shavings that I've got over here from when I prepared the, the paddles and I'm going to sprinkle them into the flame. And what I'm expecting to see, if this is actually aluminum, is we should see a uh, orangey reddish flame that, uh, that comes up. If it were zinc, it would be uh, blue, be a very blue flame. And magnesium, of course, would be bright white. Um, and this should give us an idea of what kind of material we're looking at. So let's give it a try. So there were some other trace elements in there that we could see, but that was primarily a red-orange flame. So I believe that this is an aluminum alloy and it should anodize. So I'm going to get the anodizing bath and uh, power supply set up and then we'll give that a try and see what happens. As usual, the workbench is messy because I'm working on a million things at once. 
But what we have here is we've got the anode suspended in the solution. It's attached to the positive side of our 12 volt power supply, which in this case is an ancient battery charger. Uh, we've got the cathode, which is these four aluminum plates embedded in the acid, making sure nothing is touching. We don't have any short circuits. And uh, we've got the ventilation system here which will allow us to extract any fumes. So I'm gonna turn on the power and then I'll turn on the ventilation off camera so it doesn't overload the camera, or the sound in the camera. So we'll hit power. We'll see that start foaming immediately. It's drawing about an amp and dropping, which is exactly what we would expect. We're gonna to get to about half an amp, 300 milliamps, something like that. And we're gonna leave this for about two hours to anodize. See if you can see that better if I turn this light off. Not really, but suffice it to say, it's bubbling. Everything seems to be operating the way I would expect for aluminum anodizing to operate. And we're just gonna let this run uh, and then check on it later. So I just came down to check on this to see how it's doing. You can see it's doing its thing, it's bubbling away much less aggressively than, uh, than when we started. And that's because the anodizing process is actually self-limiting. It's, uh, as the uh, oxide coating grows on the outside of the aluminum, it increases the resistance of the part so that it's more difficult for current to pass. So you can't really over-anodize. Uh, and as I understand it, the, uh, the only difference between light anodizing and heavy anodizing, like type 2 and type 3, is the temperature of the electrolyte, usually between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius, and uh, the duration of, of time that it's anodized for, or the current density. Um, since with this power supply I can't really adjust the current density, the only variables I can control are the acid concentration and the anodizing time. So. With a two-hour anodize, I should have something like a 25 micron thickness coating, I believe. Uh, I don't really have any way to test that or measure it, but uh, that's going by what it says in the math. Uh, anyway, these bins I'm using are just regular Rubbermaid food bins, and uh, the reason I chose them is because they're made of polypropylene, and polypropylene is chemically inert. It, it won't react with acid, and it won't react with a base. So it's safe for me to put the lye and the sodium bisulfate into those containers and expect them not to leak. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, the wire I'm using to suspend these parts is aluminum. You shouldn't put anything into the bath that's not aluminum or lead uh, or titanium. Aluminum, lead, or titanium um, will work really well in the bath. But keep other metals out so you don't get any contaminants. I also have some dye that uh, I've been experimenting with, and I don't have any samples down here of the dyed pieces, but I can show that later. Um, but I'm just using Tintex fabric dye, and I'm getting pretty decent results. Um, not too bad. Controlling temperature is a really important part of the anodizing process. Like I said before, this bath should be between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius, ideally, and the, uh, the dye bath should be about 60 degrees Celsius. Once we're done anodizing, we're actually going to boil this in uh, distilled water for about 20 minutes to seal the pores, and that's going to kind of finish off the anodizing, give it that nice hard coating, and uh, make sure that the, the pore structure can't actually absorb anything from the environment. Uh, yeah. Oh, and the, uh, the chemical I'm using here, sodium bisulfate, is actually a uh, pool pH reducer. Uh, so it's very easy to get. You can get it at uh, Canadian Tire, Walmart, pretty much anywhere that sells basic pool supplies. And uh, it creates the acid solution. It's about a 20% solution. I don't really have any way to measure the pH of it right now or to uh, titrate it to find the actual concentration. But as long as it's drawing a decent current and we're still seeing bubbling and it works, it doesn't really matter because we're not going for like a mil spec coating or anything like that. It just has to just has to do the job. And the job in this case is to make those paddles uh, non-stick and more durable so they're more scratch resistant. Uh, I won't be dyeing these because my dye is not food safe. 
Anyway, I'll show you some samples of what the dyed pieces look like uh, when I get back up to my office. All right, so we're here at my office, and I've got two sample pieces here that I've been testing with. Uh, this was one that I did earlier on, and uh, both of these were anodized for about two hours, and then they were dyed for about 15 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius. And uh, as you can see, the color came out really nicely. Um, I understand I could probably get a better color if I used proper anodizing dyes, uh, but I wanted to try this Tentex fabric dye because it's cheap and easily available here in Canada. You can get it pretty much anywhere. And uh, the, the finish on this turned out really nice. Uh, and I didn't do much to prepare these pieces. They're just bits out of my scrap bin. Um, very nice, smooth finish. And uh, this one I did most recently. Um, this one was an interesting experiment because I anodized this the day before. And, uh, and then I dyed it, but I, I put half of it into the acid bath for about 30 seconds to, to reopen the pores, if that's a thing. Uh, I had read somewhere online that that's something that people do if they uh, anodize and then up to a week later they want to dye it again. And if you look very carefully, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but there's a very faint line in between the, uh, the middle of this anodizing. Uh, it's a little bit lighter at the top up here and a little bit darker down here. And that's where I dipped it. I, I dipped it about halfway in the acid. And I think you can kind of see it there. There's like a little faint line. I'll Maybe I'll, I'll put some on the screen here to, to highlight it. But uh, anyway, it came out very nice. It's a very smooth finish. Um, it seems to be durable. Uh, for example, if I grab a piece of brass, let's see. All right, so I've got you mounted to a camera, um, a camera holder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brass shell casing, and I'm just going to rub it on the aluminum here. We'll do this bare part first. There we go. And you'll see that has left some scratch marks, and I can't, I can't rub those off. Those scratches are there now. If I go over to the anodized portion, and we do the same thing, we're going to see it's left some scratch marks. But an interesting thing to note about those scratch marks is you can't see on the camera, but they're brass colored. And if I scrub that, those scratches are now gone. So that shows just how hard a surface coating this is. I was able to just wipe that brass off onto my finger that it scratched off of the shell casing. Pretty amazing. Especially for a process you can do at home. And uh, it's just uh, it's just gorgeous. The um, the finish you get determines how you it is determined by how you finish the material before you put it into the bath. Um, this was just kind of rough sanded at 220 grit, and then uh, I did a quick bath in some lye to make sure it was degreased, and then uh, two hours in the um, anodizing solution at about 15 volts, and uh, this is what we got. I think it's a, a pretty amazing result for stuff you can get around for cheap. I think I may be like 30 bucks into this project so far. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the bread paddles turn out once uh, once they're done cooking there. Because that was really the whole impetus for this project. Anyway, I thought that was neat, so we'll check back once the, uh, the paddles are done. All right, so the alarm's gone off. We're at two hours. I'm going to turn off the battery charger and I'm going to disconnect my anode, cathode, and then we're going to take these out to the outside. Actually, I'm going to grab my spray so I can spray those off. This is just a bottle of distilled water. rinse off as much of the acid as we can before we get to the next step. I'm trying to be gentle because I don't want to spray anything anywhere. Oops. Okay. Let's take this outside and we'll put it into the bath. All right. Remember, this is a how done, not a how to. Okay. 
and into the drink. There we go. And we're going to let them boil for about 20 minutes at, uh, well, they'll be boiling temperature for 20 minutes. And that should seal up the pores and create a continuous anodized layer so that we have the durability we're after. And we'll check back in a little bit. It's always a good idea to have some baking soda on hand when you're working with acid. Because if you spill, you just shake some of that out, neutralize the acid, no problem. And I'm going to sprinkle some on all of my clamps and stuff too so they don't get damaged. And I've got my electrodes over here and they've been neutralized as well. That makes sure everything's safe to touch and we don't end up with any unexpected corrosion. Alright, the other one off. Let's turn off the gas. Take a look at what we got. I'm seeing a bit of a yellow tinge to this. I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera, but I'll, I'll try. So there's a little bit of a yellow tinge to the aluminum, if it'll focus. And that usually is an indicator of successful anodization. I'm not going to touch it right now because it's smoking hot. Something down here. And the workbench to cool. Looks like the same story with this one. If I can get it into the frame. It's got that yellow color, yellow green kind of color. That should indicate that we have anodization. The real test will be if we can uh, if we can actually scratch it. So we'll let those cool off, and then we'll go back up in the office and do the scratch test. All right, we're back in the office. I've got my pieces here. I've got my shell casing. Moment of truth. That looks like a brass scratch to me. Hard to tell from the light there, but it's got kind of a goldy color. Let's see if it scrubs off. It's not coming off as easy as the other one, but it does seem to be coming off. I don't feel any scratches. I might not be able to get these uh, particles of brass out of the crystal structure. It might be rougher than the, uh, the surface of the other aluminum, but it does look like it's coming off. Let's see. Yeah. And that worked. I think what we have here is anodized aluminum. These should work much better in my uh, bread maker than the raw aluminum paddles did, which stuck to the bread pretty badly. And uh, will hopefully work as well as the non-stick ones did, or as the non-stick coating on this did. But uh, we'll see next time I make some bread. All right, here's the moment of truth. The bread is done. Let's remove the paddles. That's not too bad. Some of it's stuck, but uh, yeah, that's better than it was before. Let's try the other one. They should both be pointing in the same direction.
not as non-stick as I was hoping, but uh, yeah, not bad. All right. Thanks for watching.